Bios.in Hey guys, a warm greetings to all the security enthusiasts. Welcome to the Assembly Mega Primer for Hackers. And in this series, we will be covering overall domain in assembly language. In this part 6 video, we will introduce you to the basic syscalls in x86. So moving on to our topic, what is a syscall? System calls are requests that a program can pass to an operating system to make it act on the program's behalf in carrying out some task the program itself can't do. For example, if you want a program to take an input from the user, the OS will have to interrupt the running program for some time and then take an input. This is an example of a read syscall. I hope you got some idea about the practical usage of syscalls. Anyway, we will learn more about it in the next slides. But before that, please make sure that you have watched the previous videos in the series because knowledge about assembly language and its registers is very important for this topic. So there are actually six basic syscalls, but for the time being, we'll focus on two of them, which are read and write. So each syscall has its own specific arguments. Note each of them for now, we will learn more about them in the coming up slides. This is a read syscall. Like we have discussed in the example, we use this syscall when the program has to take an input from the user. The first argument, file descriptor, is from where to read the input, whether it is from std in, std out, or std error, with integers 0, 1, 2 respectively as mentioned in the slides. The address of the buffer is the second argument or more specifically the starting address of the character array where you want to store the, um, the data. Next argument is the count that is the number of bytes to be taken as input. It should be of integer data type. Next is the write syscall. The read and write syscalls have similar arguments but they are way different in their actions. Write syscall is used when you want the program to write out data from the buffer. The first argument, file descriptor, is from where to read the input, whether it is from stdin, stdout, like I've mentioned in the previous slide. The address of the buffer is the second argument, that is the starting address of the character array where the content to be stored is taken. Next argument, count, is the number of bytes, like I've said before. So this is a short summary kind of a table. In this table, the registers and arguments to be moved to the registers are also mentioned. As I've said, there is a specific syscall number for each syscall. That syscall number should be moved into the EAX register. Next, the first argument to the EBX register, second to the ECX, and third to the EDX register. Now let's take a look into the steps involved while using a syscall. The first step is moving the syscall number to the EX register. Second step is to move the arguments to the EBX register and ECX register. The third step is to call the interrupt that is int 0x80. And then finally we will get the return value in the EX register. Now let us go for a program. Uh, I've written a program where we use the read and write syscalls to take input and print the output. So first, the file name is test. We will compile it and then we'll open it in GDB. So we will check the main of the function, the CD main. Yeah. So this is the function prolog and then First, I'll do. I'll take an input that is so the syscall number three is moved to the EX register. Um, it is the input is taken from std in, so zero value is moved to the EBX register. Uh, I, I'm taking the input and storing it on the onto the stack. So I move ESP to the ECX register, and then the number of bytes I've been given as four for the timing. I'll move to the EDX register. And then finally, the the interrupt is called. The same way, next we have the write syscall. That is, the syscall number four is moved to the EX register. 
we are writing out data so it is std out so the corresponding value is 0x1 that is stored to the ebx register and then num the number of bytes that is stored to the edx register uh, since we have already taken the input and it is stored in the ECX register, we don't have to specify it again. And then finally, we have the interrupt called, and then this is the function epilog. So we'll debug each line. We'll go and check out each line. So start, and then yes, um, it's moved to the EX register. As you can see, you can check um, like an EBX can see that ebx is also zero and then we move the esp value to ecx and move four numbers to edx and then we call the interrupt now it is waiting for our input so i'll give some four letter input that is h-e-l-l and then yeah so ex we move this is called number four to ex as you can see and then yeah so ebx 0x1 there you go and then edx that is four bytes and we call the interrupt okay so interrupt is called so we'll check whether it is printed yes so it is printed over there and then yeah we leave and return and then we have successfully exited yes so we'll just try running it out of GB, gdb so dot slash test that's the file name yeah so it is waiting for our input we'll again give h e l l and enter yeah so we have successfully completed the program the program takes an input four letter input and it prints the same so that was all about it and finally thank you guys for your attention i hope this short video helps you if you have any queries or questions feel free to contact us thanks for watching this video please leave a like and comment if you have any suggestions subscribe to the channel for more exciting content make sure you follow us on twitter and facebook